For skin problems, one of the biggest effects that you need is an alterative blood cleansing effect. Because again, we're looking at the skin in a similar way to the potential space in the joints. That is a blood problem where the blood is in overactive mode or imbalanced mode, and it needs to clear some of its contents, if you like, in order to function better. So the potential space in the skin is taken up. This is particularly relevant to hormone balance, where with teenage acne, you get acne before the periods. And with acne in boys during the adolescent phase is also very, very common. They just don't have the cyclic events. Blood cleansing is all part of hormone balancing. It's also part of circulation. And you're beginning to see that all of these are not independent action. If you improve the circulation, you'll also improve the alterative effect of the herbs delivered to the skin. If you improve the function of the nervous system chemicals, then you will also improve hormone balance because those two are integrated. Again, if you improve the digestion, you're improving the tone and astringency in the digestive tract. Therefore, you're not getting the large molecules absorbed. So by now, I hope you're getting an impression you can read that list, but you know that all of these things are interrelated. They're not just a list of independent actions. So I'll leave you to really go through the list because I'm hoping by now that you'll be filling in the gaps yourself. Then in the next slide, we'll go on to the particular herbs that we use in order to achieve these actions. A special mention should be made of the role of nervines in chronic skin disorders. It's well acknowledged, particularly by my patients, that any undue stress or any other illness can upset the balance in the skin. This is particularly the case for eczema, to a lesser extent acne, particularly adult acne, also psoriasis. But it's to a variable extent in psoriasis. For some people, it's a very definite trigger. For others, they don't really see any connection and it seems to have other triggers, not necessarily stress. The other one I would mention to do with hormone balance is seborrheic dermatitis, which is an oily skin condition of the forehead and around the nose and the chin and can extend down as far as the chest. Also, acne rosacea, which is often more common in women, particularly after the menopause. All of these would have a particular hormone influence. Overall, for all chronic or recurrent skin diseases, it's this range of action that I would be looking for of these combined effects within the anti-skin problem tincture. So in the skin cleansing tea, this is actually a very nice tasting tea. It's very, very suitable to be made up once a day and allowed to go cold or kept warm in a flask and you drink it throughout the day. And again, we have that little sneaky effect of being a tea, you increase the fluid amount that people drink during the day and you give them a change to the water. I don't think we've come across burdock before, and this is, again, a common hedgerow herb. It's an alterative by the bowels. It improves the bowel action. It's also a blood tonic. It has iron, sulfur and B vitamins. It's antimicrobial, especially staph A. It's adaptogen and antifungal and lymphatic. I think we'd all agree that these would be very happy things to have for most skin problems. Cleavers, this is the Robin Run the Hedge or Sticky Willy, that if you go for a walk in late summer, you'll have all these little burrs stuck to your trousers or your laces. This is a very effective way of spreading the seed. And if you look on the seed with the magnifying glass, you'll see that they're designed like the original nature's Velcro. A lymphatic alterative and detoxifier diuretic anti-inflammatory. You can consider it like our native aloe vera and also an adaptogen, particularly suited to the skin. Licorice is another adaptogen, anti-inflammatory, digestive, helps balance the cortisol levels. Nettle leaf. If we go back to the anti-allergy effect, it is rich in iron and minerals and has this direct anti-allergy effect. Sarsaparilla is anti-itch, anti-inflammatory, promotes sweating, it's antiseptic, it's hormone balancing. Some references quote it as having a testosterone constituents and being an anabolic herb. 
But in fact, that was one of these kind of scientific studies which turned out not to be of any clinical significance, but it's entered popular kind of um, knowledge or lack of knowledge that this might be an action of it. But just to let you know, it's not the case. Yellow dock is, again, one of our native medium strength laxative effect herbs, primarily by promoting the bile. All of these have other actions, but I'm just giving you the main reasons why I've put this in the skin cleansing tea. All in all, this is a very nice detoxing tea, but with particular emphasis of some of the actions on actually getting deep cleaning within the skin. I'll just go back to the burdock because I've got a good way of describing how I see the burdock. Burdock is a herb that kind of hoovers between the cells. And especially if you've got any tonic herbs with it that squeeze the cells and by improving the lymph and toning up the whole system. But it's like a little hoover that goes between the cells. If you can imagine a mini Mr. Henry or Dyson or any other Vax hoover, small enough, like on a microscopic level, it hoovers things up so that it's delivered to the lymph system. And the lymph system then brings all of these local toxins into the circulatory system, onto the liver, onto the kidneys, onto the sweat glands in order for them to be eliminated. So it's a hoover for the extracellular fluid. A very nice tea. Again, you would use this on a long-term basis. Somebody doesn't have teenage acne for three years and then take this for two weeks and find that everything has gone away. And much more likely to be beneficial over the 6 to 12 weeks and use in conjunction with the skin cleansing formula for moderate to severe problems and nearly always for menstrual cyclical problems like acne, you would need to add the tincture in. And then as it comes under control, you can reduce the tincture to twice a day dose or to a smaller dose on a regular basis and then wean off it. You can always have it at hand for flare-ups. So that's a good way of thinking about combining the use of the tea and the tincture. The Skin Clear Tonic Tincture Blend contains bog bean. Now bog bean is one of my favorite local herbs. It's a bitter tonic promotes urine flow, it's anti-inflammatory and a lymph alterative. You can imagine how nice it is with such a wide variety of actions. It grows in our rivers, in slow-moving rivers near the edge, and it's just such a lovely herb. We've covered the action of the burdocks in the last slide, the cleavers in other slides, the red clover, the skullcap, the yarrow, the sarsaparilla and the yellow dock. So between all of those, and feel free to go back and remind yourself of these actions, see if you can remember the actions of some of them, and then go back to the previous references and see how many actions you've got right. That way you'll build up your confidence in learning what actions are being used and how things are being used in blends, where the herbs help each other. This very unassuming looking herb is called cleavers or Gallium aparine is the Latin name. Common names include Robin Run the Hedge and Sticky Willy. It's hard to photograph this herb because it climbs up other plants in the hedgerow and it can grow up to five feet. It has a very, very weak stem, which is why it borrows the strength from the plants all around it. And it has a very watery consistency through these very pliable stems and leaves. In its appearance and how it grows, it reminds me very much of the lymph system, which is its main action as a herb. And in the same way that the lymph is almost like wall-less drainage structure coming from the periphery, um, particularly the lower legs, um, it has to climb up against gravity. One of the adaptations is that it uses the surrounding muscles to squeeze the lymph channels and then has valves in order to prevent the fluid from falling backwards. So it's very important to move the muscles of the arms and legs very vigorously in order to encourage lymph drainage. It's one of the side benefits, but a very important impact of having regular exercise. I photographed this because it was against a derelict building, because it's actually very difficult to photograph it in a way that makes it stand out from the plants behind it, which I'll show you in the next photograph. 
The flowers are very inconspicuous. You have to look very close to see the little white flowers when they're in bloom. This was taken in early spring, so the flowers aren't yet out. This is the cleavers, as you would see, like a sheet of it growing up with other plants in the background to give it support or to support each other by growing in this dense clump. And I think that's me holding one piece of it in the foreground just so that you can see it. But that's more typical of how you would see it in the hedgerow.